Our funeral took place on Monday, the 19th of September, 2022. Presidents and leaders from nations around the world attended the funeral. And it is believed to have been the largest gathering of leaders from around the world that has taken place in living memory. Her funeral was a state funeral, and it was televised live around the world, and millions tuned in to view it. Now, King Charles II became the new king immediately on Queen Elizabeth's death. However, he was officially proclaimed as Britain's monarch and head of the Commonwealth on Saturday, the 10th of September, by the Accession Council in a ceremony that traces its history back several hundred years. Now, the Accession Council is usually convened within 24 hours of the death of a sovereign and is customarily held at St. James Play Palace to make formal proclamation of the death of the monarch and the accession of the successor to the throne. It consists of members of the Privy Council, a group of senior MPs, members of parliament, both past and present, and their peers, as well as some senior civil servants, Commonwealth High Commissioners, and the Lord Mayor of London. Now let's look at this short video which describes what occurred. Pomp and ceremony refined over centuries, broadcast on television for the first time. At St James's Palace in London, a meeting of the Accession Council formally confirmed Charles III as King of Britain and Head of the Commonwealth. Among them, all six living former Prime Ministers, senior politicians, judges and officials. By the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection, beseeching God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us. God save the king. God save the king. King Charles addressed the council and paid tribute to his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II. My mother's reign was unequaled in its duration, its dedication and its devotion. Even as we grieve, we give thanks for this most faithful life. The proclamation was repeated from the balcony of St. James's Palace. Gun salutes rang out to welcome the new king. In Parliament, senior MPs pledged their allegiance to the new king. Charles and his wife, Queen Consort Camilla, then travelled to their new home, Buckingham Palace. Thousands of onlookers cheered their new king. I just felt like a really special moment in history, and it was lovely actually seeing him. I didn't know that occurred on the Saturday after the death of the queen. Complex emotions. Now, um, you may be wondering the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the accession of King Charles II has to do with the Feast of Trumpets. Now, whether there's a deep connection between them, and I will be exploring that in the sermon today. 
Now, these are trumpets which we are celebrating today. Pictures the return of Jesus Christ to replace Satan as the ruler of this world. And Jesus himself refers to Satan as the present day ruler of this world. So let's go to John chapter 12 and verse 31. For verse of John chapter 12 and verse 31. This occurs on the night before uh, he was crucified. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of this world will be discovered. Jesus made this statement on the Passover evening, on the night just before he would be crucified. And he was preparing to give his life as payment for the sins of the world. His shed blood would cover all the sins committed by mankind and would give each person that lived the opportunity to become part of the family of God. And by living a sinless life and then sacrificing that life, he qualified and was judged worthy to replace Satan as the ruler of this world. And this is what the piece of trumpet pictures the time when the rulership of this world changes from Satan to Jesus Christ. Brethren, how badly we need this change of rulership. Because Satan has ruled this world for the past 6,000 years. And his influence has produced the world we see today. A world filled with pain and suffering, death, disease, and destruction. Satan has deceived mankind into believing that his way of getting a competition, greed, envy, and love is better than the way of God, which is the way of give, peace, and love, and of joy and happiness. And by choosing Satan's way, Mankind has now reached the point where if Jesus Christ did not intervene and replace Satan and rule of this world, no flesh would be saved alive. And Jesus himself predicted that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verse, and let's look at verse 21. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of this world until this time. No one ever shall be. And unless those days will shorten, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect say, those days will be shortened. Brethren, this world needs the return of Jesus Christ to save it from two kinds of destruction. And as we see, the world is getting dark and more evil as each day goes by. The problems in the world are becoming more frequent and more difficult to solve. And a time of trouble never before experienced in the world is just ahead of us. Mankind cannot solve the major problems in the world today. They have become too numerous and too large. And the only solution is the return of Jesus Christ and the setting up of the kingdom of God. Brethren, that is what we are celebrating today. The ultimate solution to the world's problems. 
which is a change of leadership of this world from Satan to Jesus Christ. A few days ago, we just witnessed a change of rulership in the United Kingdom. And a similar change will occur in the future when a change of the ruling of the world occurs. And this change is described in Revelation chapter 11 when the seven trumpet sounds. Let's go now to Revelation 11 and verse 15. We still see that no mention this book, but we can go over it once again because it's a very important scripture. Revelation 11 verse 15. Then the seven angels sounded, and there were loud voices in the and saying, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of all the living Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Brethren, when the seven trumpet is blown, the rulership of this world changes. God and Jesus Christ. Now become the rulers of this world. What we see is that Satan has been replaced as the ruler of this world. Similarly, the kingdoms of this world have now been replaced by the kingdom of God. What a momentous change occurred when that seven trumpet sounds. That seven trumpet signifies the end of an age and the beginning of a new age. And this change is what the world has been waiting for since the Garden of Eden. Now let's continue in the 16 of Revelation 11. And the 21st heaven to start before the new truth. Found their faith to and worship God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord of the Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your way from the name. The nation will have me, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy the rules, destroy the field. Now, let's examine these verses more, more closely. What we see is that the 24 elements in heaven for this change of leadership, but the nations of the world are not. They are angry that they are being replaced by another kingdom, and they will use their power and authority and the ability to control people in the world. They will not give up their positions of authority, which are the fights. And this eventually leads to the Battle of Armageddon, which occurs later on, when all the nations of the world gather together to fight the returning Jesus Christ. Now, let's see what also happens at this time. Let's reread verse 18. The nation grew angry and your wrath has come. And the time of the day that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great. But when the seven trumpet blows, this is also the time when the people of God receive their rewards. And this includes the prophets and the saints, 
and all those who have been good and been faithful to him from the time of Abel right up to this time. Now, what is their reward? But their reward is that they are in the first resurrection when they will receive eternal life in the family and kingdom of God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's look at verse 51 to 53. Verse 51 of 1 Corinthians 15. Be good, I tell you on this tree, we shall not all sleep, but we shall wake up the tree. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be made incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the world must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. But in the last trumpet mentioned here is the seventh trumpet of the seven trumpet praise that we uh, read about in Revelation 11. And Mr. Sidano went through the seven trumpets that were blown. Now, when the seven trumpet blew, the dead in Christ will be changed from mortal to immortal. From corruptible to incorruptible. And let's continue in verse 54. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the seed that is written, Death is torn in victory. Who is going to your state? Who is going to your victory? But when those in this resurrection will not experience death anymore, they will live forever. The fear of death is one of the man's greatest fears. However, those in this first resurrection will not have to worry about death anymore. What a tremendous blessing that will be when it occurs. Now, this first resurrection is also been described in First Thessalonians. So let's go across to First Thessalonians. And let's go to chapter 4. And let's begin in verse 13. First in Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who are falling asleep. Let you sorrow and others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, and we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, will by no means receive those who are saved. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we shall always be with the Lord. But when the seven trumpet blows, Jesus will descend from heaven to meet the resurrected saints. In the cloud and in the air. The dead will rise with you, and then those who are will rise to be Christ as well. 
Brethren, what a joyous event that will be. This is our dream. And what we are all striving to be present for. So, we have seen two significant events happening when the seventh trumpet blows. One, there is a change of rulership of the world from Satan to God and Jesus Christ. And two, the first resurrection of God. And the saints are changed to spirit being. Now, at the beginning of the sermon, we saw with the change of monarch from Queen Elizabeth II to King Charles II, an accession council is convened to proclaim that there is a new monarch. But brethren, do we know that a similar accession council is also convened when Jesus Christ becomes the new ruler of this world? Now let's see when and where that happens. Okay, so let's go back to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. And let's reread verse 15. Then the seven angels sounded, and there were long voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before them on their truth on their faces and worship God. And then one of my life describes these verses as the seventh trumpet, the kingdom proclaimed. But you notice this proclamation of a change of worship takes place in heaven. But it says, God is in heaven. And it also mentions the 24 elders who are at God's throne in heaven worshiping him. This is a very special event, and more details of it are given in Daniel chapter 7. So let's go on to Daniel chapter 7. And let's begin in verse 1. Daniel 7 and verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. So we see here that Daniel receives this dream, and in it, four beasts are described. The four beasts are the four great kingdoms that will rule the earth. And let's continue in verse 4. The first will ride a lion that had eagle wings. I watched till its wings were flat on the earth, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand on feet like a man. And the man's power was given to it. So that's the first piece. Verse 5. And certainly, at the end, a second line of ale. It was raining up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they sent down to it, arriving in the body of the much first. After this, I went in the mouth, like a little brother, which had in fact four wings of a bird. The beast was in the four heads, and the minion was given to it. So this was the two beasts. Verse 7, 
After this, I saw in the night vision and be a beast, gentle and gentle, exceedingly strong. It had a huge iron teeth. It was divinely breaking in pieces and traveling the residue with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten moons. Brethren, what we see here is that the four beasts mentioned here are the kingdoms of Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. And they match the four sections of the image in the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had earlier in Daniel chapter 2. I think we're all familiar with that dream and the image. And that Daniel, the only one who could interpret what that image represented. And that Daniel, I'm going to give Daniel the meaning of that image in a dream, night vision. Now let's just take a quick look at that. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 31. Daniel 2 verse 31. Where Daniel explains the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you, and its form was awesome. The image here was of a fine wood, its chest and arm of silver, and its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and clay. So we have here a table which shows, which compares Daniel's dream that he had with the Portuguese and Nebuchadnezzar dream with the image. And we see that they match. This one was a lion that represented Babylon that matched Nebuchadnezzar's dream with the head of gold. This two was a bear represented in Middle Persia. And that coincides with the chestnut out of silver in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Similarly, beach tree with a leopard represented Greece. That coincides with the belly and tie of bronze. And then the four beach had iron teeth and ten bones represented Rome. And that the Roman Empire, and that coincides with the legs and feet. Which represented iron and clay, which had iron and clay. So, this dream that Daniel had, the one that he never had, gives details of the kingdoms of this world. They will describe the kingdoms that will rule this world right up to the end of this age. And they also describe how these earthly kingdoms will be replaced by another kingdom that will last forever and will never be destroyed. And we know that kingdom is the kingdom of God. Now let's continue in Daniel 7. Daniel 7 and verse 9. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the ancient of these were seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wood. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream infused and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand ministered to him. Ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Urging the scene is a Christian in heaven. 
and the throne of God. And in describing the ancients of days, who we know is God the Father, being seated. And it shows that millions and possibly millions of angels and other beings being present. It said the poor was seated. And this indicates that this is an official event of great significance. And let's continue on verse 13. I was watching in the night visions and the one man saw him playing with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days, and they were in there before him. Then to him the given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom of the one which shall not be destroyed. But in these verses, I'm describing when Jesus is given dominion and rulership over the kingdoms of this world. When it says that the ancient of David was seated and the king was seated, this is similar to the accession council that gathered to proclaim King Charles II as the new king. So here in Daniel chapter 7, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, is provisional as the head of the kingdom of God here. He is now the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as he is described in the book of Revelation. Now, when does this event occur? Now, to determine that, let's examine this teaching of Lucy. It says, And behold, one and the Son of Man coming with the flowers of heaven. Now, the means coming with the flowers is very significant. Now, consider this. If Jesus Christ is presently now sitting at the right hand of God in heaven, where will he be coming from? Also, what are these problems that he is coming with? Now, to understand that, we need to examine how to say what these clothes are. So, let's go to the first chapter, chapter which we read earlier. First Thessalonians chapter 4, and let's look at verse 17. Verse 17 says, Then we who are alive and are living shall be together again to meet the Lord of the Lord. But in this verse says that the same to have been resurrected in spirit bodies will be in the clouds to meet Jesus Christ in the air. So notice the words in the clouds. That would be Hebrews chapter 20. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every week. Notice the word a cloud of witnesses. Here again, the saints are described as a cloud of witnesses. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, and let's look at verse 50. Matthew 24 and verse 50 states, Then the sign of the Son of Man came and then the tribes of the 
and they will see the data coming with point and way and he will send him a great sound of the trumpet, which is the seven trumpet, and they will gather in their families again from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to another. But then Jesus here said that he will be coming on the seven trumpet songs. To God is elect who are the newly resurrected saints. Now, putting these uh, scriptures together, they indicate the resurrected saints will meet Christ in the air and they will be in the clouds of heaven. Now, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, and let's reread verse 13. Verse 13 of Daniel 7. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the throne of heaven. Virgin Mary says, The Son of Man coming with the throne of heaven. Could this mean that Jesus is coming with the resurrected seeds in the Bible? That after, Jesus, after the seeds meet Jesus in the Bible, they return with him to heaven to appear before the Lord of Father. This special procession where Jesus is now declared the new king. And the rule of the earth. Now that is something to consider. So I should continue in verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, watching my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked them the truth of what you so he took me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Verse 17. Those great beasts which are four are four things which arise out of the earth. But the same of the most shall receive the kingdom and the who sent the kingdom from the world. Even forever and ever. Brethren, verse 18 indicates that right after Jesus receives his kingdom, the saints also receive the kingdom as well. And these believers imply that the saints are right there in heaven with Jesus Christ, receiving the kingdom. Saints are priests. And we know what we want is to be kings and priests ruling with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. And let's just look at that in Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. Revelation 1 verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Great to you and praise from him, ocean, and he and he is the crown, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful to the man, the faithful to the dead, and the root of the world of Jesus and the root of the people. To him who will have a river from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his glory, to his to him be glory and dominion for a river. Amen. Reverend Apostle John shows here that we will be kings and priests. That is our destiny. 
Virgin do a marvelous blessing on my own privilege that will be. Now, I think that it is significant that in Daniel chapter 7, the saints possessing the kingdom is not only the enchantments, but three times. We spoke about the time in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 18. Now let's look at the other two times. So let's go back to Daniel 7 and let's look, look at verse 21. Daniel 7 verse 21. I was watching and the same woman was making work against the saints and prevailing against them. Until the ancient of the days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. The Reverend Head said that the God of the Father makes a judgment in favor of the saints, and they should possess the kingdom. And let's continue in verse 26 of Daniel 7. Let's read down to verse 26. But the Lord shall be seated. This is the Lord of heaven. And they shall take away his dominion. That is the dominion of the uh, kingdoms of this world. To consume and destroy world. Then the kingdom and dominion and of the kingdoms under the shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and ocean of dominion, dominion shall serve and reign. But you notice here that the heavenly court decides that dominion shall be removed from the full kingdom. Which we know to be the Roman Empire, which will be ruling at that time. And then that dominion is given to the saints who will rule with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of the Roman Empire. And based on these three verses, what we see is that the saints receive and possess the kingdom of God. Right after Jesus Christ receives it himself from the Holy Father. Brethren, that is our inheritance and destiny. Once we overcome, once we bear fruits and endure to the end. And this is what the Feast of Trumpet pictures. The time when the kingdom was ruled by Jesus Christ and the saints takes over rulership of the whole world. Brethren, what a wonderful blessing it is to have this precious knowledge and understanding. Because the rest of the world does not have this knowledge. But we have been given this knowledge and we must ensure that it does not go to waste. Now, after we receive and possess the kingdom of God, what happens after that? Now, it is highly probable that the marriage ceremony and supper between the Lamb and his bride, the saints, then occurs. And let's look at that in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19, and let us begin in verse 7. Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready, and to make the matter to be arrayed in fine women, clean and bright. And the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, let them be the of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. 
wherein we have been put into the hearts of them. And all of the billions of people who have ever lived, only a few have been invited to this marriage supper. And we are including among that few. Brethren, what an honor and privilege it is to be included among the bride of Christ. So we are talking about a once in a lifetime event. But brethren, this event is a once in eternity event. And we don't want to miss it. So let us ensure we have our wedding groups so that we can be present at that wedding. Now let's continue in verse 11 of Revelation 19. Verse 11. Behold, our idols, and he who sat on the Lord, faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes all. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was committed with a root dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the angels in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, that is referring to the saints, following him on that process. Now, when he did not do the sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself be wounded. He himself tread the long press of the faithful and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his roof and on his side a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Brethren, these verses describe Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, leaving heaven with the saints following him. To return to those to whom are true the kingdoms and the armies of the world. And let's drop down to verse 19. Verse 19. And I saw the beast, the king of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war on him still, who sat on the roof and against his army. Brethren, the kings and armies of the world gathered together to fight the returning Jesus Christ and the saints at Armageddon. Let's go to Revelation 16, which refers to that, the battle at Armageddon. Revelation 16, and let's begin in verse 12. Verse 12 refers to the sixth born of God, which is called Verse 12. Uh, I think we might know the seventh trumpet consists of seven bowls of God. So we are now at the sixth bowl of God. Verse 12. Then the sixth angel, the great river with three trees, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Then I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the foreman's prophet. And they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of those who to guard them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Let's drop down to verse 16. And they gathered them together to the place formed in Hebrew and together. Brethren, the sixth bowl of ground in the corner, the kings and armies of the world are gathered at Armageddon. 
And then the seventh way of Hannah is Paul. And Jesus Christ and the same returned to earth to destroy the armies of the world. And let's go to Revelation 17 and verse 14. Revelation 17 and verse 14. These will be the work of the Lamb, and the Lamb will be the work of them. For he is Lord of the world, and King of kings, and those who are with him are holy, chosen, and faithful. Brethren, the armies of this world will be completely destroyed. And Jesus Christ and the saints will now take complete control of the world. So to recap the events that have occurred, at the seventh trumpet blast, Jesus Christ comes from heaven for his saints, and they return to heaven with him. At the seventh great trumpet, which we just saw here, Jesus Christ returned to the earth with his saints to destroy the armed forces of the world. And between the seventh trumpet blast and the seventh great trumpet, Jesus Christ is proclaimed as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The saints receive and possess the kingdom of God, and it is highly probable that the marriage supper then occurs. Now, getting back to our present time, after King Charles has been officially proclaimed as king, the next step in the process is his coronation. And this is when he is already proud of this is when he is formally crowned as King of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Now, while the date for the King's coronation has not yet been announced, it is expected to take place in the spring or summer of next year. Now, it is possible that it could occur on June 2nd, 2023, which will be 70 years from when his mother, Queen Elizabeth, was crowned in 1953. So now we have a picture of when uh, Queen Elizabeth was crowned. All right, this is a picture of her coronation back in 1953. And we go to another one, which is the coronation portrait with her and Prince Philip. Okay. Now, the coronation of King Charles will probably take place in Westminster Abbey, and Charles will be the 14th monarch. To be from there. And I am now a coach from the coronation service from BBC News. So I'm going to put this now and we have a slide with that. It is an Anglican religious service carried on by the Archbishop of Canterbury. At the climax of the ceremony, he will place St. Edward's crown on Charles's head, a solid gold crown dated from 1661. Now, this is the centerpiece of the crown jewels at the Tower of London, and is only worn by the monarch at the moment of coronation itself. Not least because it weighs a empty. 2.23 kilograms, almost five pounds. The new king will take the foundation wound in front of the watching wing. And during this elaborate ceremony, he will receive the honor and scepter 
and several members of this input group. And the archbishop of Canterbury placed the Italian crown on his head. We have here a picture now of the crown, the scepter, and the oil that will occur at that coronation. Now, regarding the coronation of Jesus Christ and as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Bible does not say much. However, it does describe the throne that he will sit on. And let's go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, which refers to that truth. Luke chapter 1, and begin with verse 31. Verse 31. And behold, this is when uh, the angel Gabriel is speaking to Mary and announcing Jesus' birth. And we know the woman can see him in your womb and bring forth a son and shall bear the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highs. And the Lord will give him the truth of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And all his kingdom, there will be no end. So here it is prophesied that Jesus will sit on the throne of David when his kingdom is established. And this is also mentioned in Isaiah chapter 9. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. This is a scripture we are all familiar with. Isaiah 9, let's begin in verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, David and over his kingdom, to alter it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forth, even and forever. The zeal of the Lord of Peace will perform this. So here the thing is prophesied that Jesus will sit on the throne of David. Now, if these prophecies are to be fulfilled, the throne of David must exist somewhere today. The question is where? Now, connected to these prophecies is also a promise made to King David by God. Let's look at our promise. Let's go to the second Samuel and go seven. Second Samuel, sorry, chapter seven and go sixteen. Go sixteen or second Samuel seven. This is a message to King David from God. And your heart and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your truth shall be established forever. So God here promises that the truth of David will exist forever together with his descendants. Now, this promise is also mentioned in Psalm 89. Let's go to Psalm 89. And let's begin in verse 29. Psalm 89 and verse 29. His seed, I want to get this directed to the David. His seed was told and need to endure for the Lord. And his truth as the deed of the Lord. If it is time to take my Lord and do not walk in my judgments, 
If the beam has stuck beams and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with strikes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not utterly, I will not utterly take from him. No more for my faithfulness to be. My covenant I will not break. No order to the wind that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn the fullness, I will not allow it to be lived. His seed shall endure forever. I finish truly as the sun before me. And this decision shall be established forever and when I move. Brethren, based on these promises made to David, his truth and his descendants exist somewhere in the today. Question is where? Now, many believe that the true world of David now resides in London. And the family of Queen Elizabeth and King Charles and direct descendants of King David. Now, when the nation of Judah went into captivity many years ago, it is believed that the throne was taken to Aliyah by the prophet Jeremiah. It then went to Scotland and then to London, where it resides now. Now, if this is coming, then the throne will move once again back to Jerusalem where Jesus Christ will sit on it and rule the world. Now the saints will also be given truth to assist Jesus Christ in ruling the world. Let's go to our final scripture, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20 and verse 4. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them. And judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the soul of the beast and the beast of the Jesus, and hope the word of God, and what not worship the beast, or his image, and I have not received his mark of their prophets, and on their hand. And they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Brethren, the saints will reign with Christ for a thousand years and even beyond. And brethren, this is our destiny. This is what the peace of trumpets points towards. This is what we will quote on and choose them. Why we will justify and sanctify and will be glorified once we endure to the end. Brethren, let us not waste this wonderful opportunity that we have been blessed with. Let us all ensure that when the seven trumpet blows, we will be there to meet Jesus in the glory and then rule with him in the kingdom of God forever.